We go now to Los Angeles with Deadline.com, Los Angeles coronavirus update. Mayor Eric Garcetti says DWP will shut off water and power at homes that throw large parties. This is so freaking offensive. I mean, it's uh, on on so many levels. Let me count the levels. The metaphysical level, the literal level, the physical level, the political level, the ethical level. I just, okay. Uh, this is, that was a bad Hannibal Burris reference. But you know, no, really, on so many levels. This is, a, and I'm the first to say being offended is freaking bullshit, right? Like, no. But really? You're doing this for people's health, so you're going to turn off utilities. I mean, so what if the virus is everything you say it is? Do people not have a right to go get the virus? You want, like, do you, do, do I not have a right? And I, and I, I don't, I'm not saying that I want to do this, but if, the, if we had a free market for medicine, this, it would probably, there, there'd probably be um, a, a legit, way to expose and quarantine yourself and get the antibodies without a dangerous vaccine, you know, or, or there'd be a, there'd be a process. Cause I, I know there were a lot of people when this came out, they looked at the death rates, looked at their age rates. Well, this is, you think about it. We should have done this a long time ago. Right. I mean, you have to be like, we should have gone out and said, Hey, everybody who's in the 0.0001% mortality range rate risk groups for this, get it quarantine for two weeks, get it over with. And then you can't even be a carrier. Like that might've been the right thing to do. I'm not saying it is. I'm not a scientist. I don't have the data to back that up, but I know that it's a possibility given the data that we do have that I have seen. But regardless, even if the data is wrong, do I have a right to be wrong with my own health? Do I have a right to make that decision for myself? Damn right I do. Cause I own myself. You don't own me. And yet we have a government that operates as if it does. And this, this reminds me of the irrationality of the drug war. You know the cliche. Drugs might ruin your life, so if you ca if we catch you with drugs, we're going to arrest you and ruin your life. It, uh, it is so dishonest. They know this. They know that there's that cannabis like it, it, that to what extent drugs are even a social problem as a health problem that they would be better dealt with all the data like it's portugal we'd be better off treating drugs as a public health issue rather than a legal issue why are government's favorite drugs legal right alcohol nicotine and uh what was the other what's the other big one caffeine work hard die young and forget that you're a slave Caffeine, nicotine, alcohol. Those are not drugs that challenge your attitude of subservience. They promote it. Marijuana, cannabis has the opposite effect. Psychedelics certainly have the far opposite effect. And you have the right to decide what you put in your own body. You have the right on private property, at least, to decide what risk level you want to accept in your life you want to go to parties nobody should have the right to stop you and and what they're doing and it's, it, this is like i'm not thinking hey oh you got off power and water to some somebody in beverly hills like they're going to uh they're not going to die of thirst <laughs> you know like I, I get it it's not it's not at that level but it's like you think this is good for people's health So why is this a problem to the story? Uh, he called recent gatherings of mostly young people in the Hollywood Hills and Calabasas flagrant violations of health orders. You can issue health orders and then do like, really you have the right to order us around based on your health advice. I don't think that's how it works. Well, we have already closed all bars and nightclubs. These large house parties have essentially become nightclubs said the mayor. He then indicated he would hold them to similar scrutiny. The same thing we would do with businesses. Yeah, you don't respect individual rights in people's residences or place of, places of business. Surprise, surprise. If the LAPD responds to repeated complaints and verifies that there have been violations at home, 
The city will, within 48 hours, have the DWP shut off service at that home. Now, first of all, I go, how fucking inefficient is government? It takes you 48 hours? What if there was a hostage situation where you had to go? Could you go? I guess they would go and clip lines. But by this methodology, it still takes it like, oh, well, you can party for another 48 hours. You can. You can spread the virus for another 48 hours and then we're cutting the power and you're going to have to spread the virus in the dark and pee outside in the bushes. <laughs> like, I mean, there's a certain silliness and futility of it as well, right? Garcetti also indicated that county health inspectors and other city reps would be on the lookout for violations. Oh, good. More make work programs. Asked about the legal standing for his action, Garcetti said, you're breaking the law just as we can shut down bars, breaking alcohol laws in places that are in criminal violations. We can shut them down. Not really firm ground. No, you're, you're going to extend standards of law of businesses to private residences and not just respect the fact that they're private. I guess, I guess he's making the case that they're operating as businesses without a license. But he said that city legal experts had vetted the measure and found it to be on firm legal ground. Oh, that's so reassuring. I hate to invoke, uh, you know, Godwin's law. But yeah, everything Hitler did was legal. Everything Pol Pot did, everything Mao did was legal. Oh, no, it's okay for us to do this because it, it's legal because we said so because we made the law. Really? The mayor said, we can actually do the power or wa water shutoff after a first violation, but we like to educate, not enforce. Really? Oh, my gosh. If anybody ever deserved to go fuck himself. Hmm. No, this isn't because education also means persuasion and presenting a case, and you haven't done that. You've gone with fake numbers, obvious lies and propaganda about the virus as a justification for something that you have no right to do in the first place, Mayor Garcetti. And President Trump for declaring the national state of emergency. L.A. County Director of Public Health, Barbara Fair, these parties and gatherings hurt all of us. We ask that everyone make good decisions. Don't host large parties and don't attend one if you're invited. It's sort of like the libertarian thing. Don't like gay marriage? Don't get gay married. Don't like smoking pot or don't like pot? Don't smoke it. And you don't like freedom? Don't embrace it. That doesn't mean you have to take it from other people. And no, does it hurt all of us? No, they, they, they don't have the excuse of having flattened the curve anymore. Right? That's all gone. By, by all of their numbers and, and, and metrics and whatnot, they can't use that as an excuse for, for any of these policies. So... What she says is because they create a lot of risk for transmission at activities that really are not essential. You're oh, so you get to be the arbiter now of, of what's essential. And so we, ah, I'll go back to Hitler because my friend Daniel Hayes put it on his his uh, Twitter right after they did this. He changed his Twitter profile picture to a Star of David that said non-essential on it. You know, wow, yeah, that's some deep commentary just right there with that one word. But again, a lot of risk of transmission. Okay, no one is, you, you want to you know, arrest? I'd, I'd rather you say you can sue somebody for violating your personal space now coming within six feet of you if you're wearing like a six foot barrier. Like, yeah, there's a new standard of personal space. There's, I know, Jim's rolling his eyes. And But I'm trying to say like, look, if, 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 if this is the new expectation, if you are this scared and you want the rest of humanity to recognize your precautions, okay. You don't want me to stand within six feet of you. You want to wear some barrier. Like the guy with the pool floaties on his head at Walmart sticking out six feet in every direction. You want to be the crazy one. You get to be the crazy one. You want to be the one invoking that standard. You want to wear a mask. You want to say nobody without a mask allowed on my property? Hey, I respect your right to be wrong about this. But I do not respect you saying that you have a right to violate my rights. Or anybody else's. And this is really dangerous. You know, and, and I, I do want to go back to this, you know, the, the, the whole mask thing and the policy, like, uh, about wearing masks proactively. If you wear a mask proactively, you are feeding into the fear and the paranoia. 
you are making over. And there's something else. There's another like just unintended consequence of this is that, and, and I think this goes forever now because wearing masks in public have been, has been kind of normalized, right? Even if, if they can just keep 10% of the population scared enough to, 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 or, you know, even infiltrated, whatever in public, you know, have people out or keep the corporate policy of wearing masks so that, I mean, like they could do that, right? They, it would be very easy for government right now to raise a new fear specter. The virus mutated, right? They've already said that. They've, they've set themselves up to keep this going indefinitely. And all they have to do is keep Walmart policy. Like if they did just this, right? If they just managed to keep Walmart policy as staff must wear masks and greeters offer them to people at the door, then it's normalized enough that child traffickers can now evade facial recognition in, 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 in person or a lot of detection. And uh, I had an interesting exchange about this on Twitter. Someone in the, in the producer's chat, Telegram, sent me a meme, and it's a, it's a child's face with a, with a black mask over and over the blast, black mask. It, it, has, uh, it has the text. I think I can pull this up real easy here. Um, let's see. I should, I should have it. Um, yeah, this is it. A child in America is 66,667 times more likely to be sold to human traffickers than die of COVID-19. In addition, your masks assist them in being transported undetected and unidentified to anyone. Now, the funny thing, where that I, I said, where'd that number come from? And the person who, sh who shared it didn't know. I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter. This is kind of, this is like math trolling. It's like math reverse trolling. Right. Because so how did you get that number? Six hundred. Are you trying to say and, and James Weeks, my friend, actually jumped in and said, that can't be right. Are you trying to say that every child in America is a victim of child trafficking? Because if there, if there have been 60 child deaths of covid and times six thousand. Uh, that would be four million times sixty six thousand or something like that. And I go, that's not how math works. That's not what we're talking about, James. And then he starts he starts breaking it down and attacking the math of this. And I go, oh, James, I wish you could apply the same scrutiny to the COVID numbers. Ha ha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. See, like that was it. Just think about it for a second. And and more importantly, because, the, the, okay, they say 60 children have died of coronavirus. If you assume it's it's one or or how many, I, I assume this number is is like, you know, it's it's a, obviously a, a divisor number of some round 100,000, right? 66,667. It's like, Two thirds of a hundred thousand, right? So maybe the you know you, what, what numbers do you want to use for this? How many? How you know what is a child versus a young adult versus a teenager? You know what what, what counts as child trafficking? What number do you include in that? Uh, and what numbers do you uh, apply for COVID nineteen? The thing is, COVID nineteen. Even James was like sixty children in America have died. I guarantee you, it's a fuck ton more than that. Who are going to be sold to human traffickers. And it's worth pointing this out. That by, by giving into this. You're feeding into the paranoia. You're making tra child trafficking. You're easier. You're, and the general exploitation of society. Remember the super class. Things like this don't happen without their permission. They they want this. They, they want to be, the, the ability to, to move people around in public with masks on. Or at least they're not against that being part of the new reality, the new normal. So there's why why do I do this? Like I, I told you, we're gonna we're gonna do a corona block on Friday. You know, we're gonna get into this. Why? I mean, it's it's a dark cloud hanging over everything for a lot of reasons. You see that it's like it's it's direct negativity, it's it's direct economic hardship that is unjustified, unwarranted, unnecessary, and, and is part of the general racket of government exploitation of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor, right? Government is working very well right now. They're doing their job. And when, when I see that, yeah, it's offensive. And I want to attack the people who are going after this. But then there are the people who are going along with it out of good intentions, and I think most Americans who are wearing their masks, you know, so I'm, from what I see, and I'd love to see some data to back this up, but the majority are just kind of like, eh, conflict avoid and go along when well, my boss requires it. Well, if I have to, well, if it's being polite, 
But most of them don't care. I mean, even where we see masks mandatory, half the people are wearing them with their nose exposed or around their chin, even walking around stores. I'm wearing a mask. Like, yeah, like, maybe it's, you know what? I'm wearing a mask symbolically. Screw this silliness. Uh, but, but with the, the I, I see these stories like getting st- shared on, on Facebook of this town raised a thousand dollars to buy materials and a sewing machine for volunteers so that they could get everybody masks. And it's like, at the cost of putting that effort towards fighting pedophilia and human trafficking, at the cost of dealing with real health crises, the opioid epidemic, the obesity epidemic, all the the chronic health issues that, that Americans experience. And people will die and this is always the case. I'm not saying this is special, but uh, about right now, but it is ex- exaggerated right now. People will die unnecessarily because humans have, and in large chunks of the population, have had their attention misdirected. And, and I do feel that an important part of what we do with this show is saving lives by calling attention to that and saying, no, no, no. Yes, you are right to be compassionate to be responsive to human suffering. But people die needlessly when you let that most humane quality of yours be misdirected.